So, the Harrispect looks pretty awesome. I like the massive yawning maw and tendrils. It reminds me a little of the thing. Actually, what the hell is a Harrispect? Why the name? Okay, in ancient Rome, these were the dudes who sliced open sacrificial animals and read omens in their entrails. Okay, I found a model online that looked pretty cool and snagged it. It's a little less detailed than the Games Workshop model, but I want to have a practice run on a nice cheap 3D print before investing in a spanky Citadel version. And you never know, maybe I could run a couple of them for fun and this fellow could accompany the legit one on the battlefield. Anywho, it was an easy one to run through the printer. Just a bunch of large parts, a body, legs, tail, base head, and then the maw and the tongue, and a couple of smaller clawed limbs, and a couple of large shoveling claws. It all glues together really easily and quickly, and because of the lack of parts, there's not many gaps or connections that need filling in. So then it is off to the box for a layer of Chaos Black Primer all over. Once dry, time to drain my pot of McCrag blue by giving the hide of this big fellow a comprehensive layer. Lots of nooks and crannies, so dabbing with a larger brush cut down painting time. And then breaking out the Zerus purple to get a layer on the areas of armoured chitin, the large back carapace, the segments on the shoveling claws and the main arms, and down towards the tail. The yawning maw and tongue get a layer of white scar, covering everything including those little mandibles. And then Imric blue dry, loaded up onto the brush, and then painted onto the blades and spines and the claw tips, shedding paint to get a solid hue so I can then start dry brushing the limbs and ribs and tail with what's left over. Oops, almost to the null oil. So grabbing a decent sized brush, I swabbed it all around and then left the model to dry head down so the null oil pools up against the overlapping layers of chitin to generate a nice shadow. And then Ethereum Blue Dry, and like with the Imric, loaded up the brush, apply a little more frugally to the same areas to got the Imric, and then a light dry brush over everything else. Gene Stealer Purple, and then dry brush the chitin armor, catching the edges, bringing out the wrinkles and ridges, highlighting the areas above the null oil and such. And now, to get that nice bioluminescent glow that all my tyrannies have, Nihilic Oxide washed around the maw, the mandibles and the tongue, which pools up nicely in the crevices, giving it a nice radiant effect. And then White Scar, a light dry brush onto the oxide, granting a smoother transition towards the fang tips, so there's a darker oxide colour deep in the maw that gets lighter as you emerge until it's white at the furthermost appendages. Okay, I don't have the right size base for this thing, so I rummaged around online and found some that can be printed in all shapes and sizes. Links for everything in the description. So I cranked out the 120 by 92 millimeter one and in advance glued a bunch of quarter inch pieces from my small weld slate and stone across the surface and then glued the Harrispex in place. Then Elmer's glue squirted on and wiped around so I could sprinkle on eighth inch gravel. Once this was dry, back to the model and white scar carefully applied to the gills and vents on the limbs. And then the Nihilic Oxide over the white which settles into the troughs and gives a great internal radiance look. If the paint went a little out of the vent, it's easy to just apply some delicate lines of McCrag blue to conceal it. And then a blast of varnish to seal everything in. And here we have the mighty and dreadful Harrispex, a nightmarish bioform deployed in the later stages of planetary consumption that devours vast amounts of biomass at an incredible rate. Anything too large to be swallowed whole is torn apart by its massive claws to make it more manageable for digestion. Specific targets are ensnared by its huge tongue that launches forth to snag and then haul back into the awaiting and ever ravenous craw. The sight of this monstrosity ripping through flesh and gorging on prey can shape the courage of even the most stalwart warrior, making it a brutal psychological weapon in addition to a grievous master of close quarter combat and devastation. Addendum. 
So I ended up treating myself to a Games Workshop Harrispex, and ye gads, the level of detail is also well worth it. I also magnetised it to give me yet another exocrine, which I'll cover in a different video. And as you can see, the 3D print needs to be scaled up just a little, probably 10% should do it. Anyways, glad I had a nice practice on this one, it came in handy to do the legit one justice. But anyway, now I have a pair of these big fellas to chop on infantry.